Craving. You could just throw quarters in that machine all night long. It was a really addictive game, and it's like it was pure competition at the arcades. They brought the arcades back to life. Street Fighter was the biggest catalyst for arcades, biggest source of rebirth. And they pushed the gaming envelope. People always remember the fatalities in Mortal Kombat. It was a landmark in graphic death. This is the history of... While Galaxian and Space Invaders are kings of the arcade, it wasn't like a kid phenomenon. It was like really across the board phenomenon in terms of who was playing arcade games. A game designer named Tim Skelly unknowingly gives birth to the one-on-one -on -one fighting game. My second game, uh, Warrior, was some people have said it's the precursor to the two-person fighter, but frankly it's top-down and the similarity is two characters don't shoot the projectiles at each other. They actually make contact with the swords. And that really wasn't intentional, I and mean, it wasn't really trying to do anything special there, it was just to make a game. When they're facing each other, you can see they're both holding swords and they're facing right at each other. Very crude game, but it was actually kind of like the first fighting game. That was like 1979. It was very basic, but people actually got to compete against one another instead of just like going back and forth and like on pump. You're actually inflicting damage on the other opponent. So I think that kind of started it. People were just like, hey, I like beating you up, you know, virtually. And I think that just might have, you know, started the whole, you know, fighting game craze. But by the time the next notable fighter appears, the arcade market has crashed. And Pac-Man has gone from Prince to Pauper. What had happened is we pretty much saturated the market. By the middle of 1982, we were just full. It was a fad. I think there's no other way to put it. The whole thing just sort of collapsed under its own weight. But a small handful of survivors continue to make games. 1983, the arcades were kind of going downhill. Data East wasn't genius at the time because they had this game where you could have two people play at the same time, and everybody knew, you know, what quarter munchers were at the time, but they came up with this, this idea in this game that actually would double the earnings because you'd always have two people playing on the game at the same time. Karate Champ, it's an arcade game from 1983 by Data East. It was the first two-player arcade fighting game with uh, dual joysticks on each side. You did special moves in the game and your movement from left to right with uh, the dual joystick basically face off against your opponent. And it was, you know, it was a straightforward karate game and it was it was very basic because I mean you basically walk up against each other and you'd start hitting each other. But it was tons of fun because you were facing off against your friends. In 1984, Konami introduces countless gamers to carpal tunnel syndrome with ER Kung Fu. Fighting games sort of created this term button mashing, where you'd see people in arcades just madly tapping the buttons and the joystick. And button mashing really led to some people eventually figuring out, hey, you know, maybe we can sort of add some secret combinations of certain buttons and certain joystick moves to, you know, create amazing new moves and amazing new powers that you'll have in a fighting game. VR Kung Fu was really kind of the first game where you saw an arena, your environment, a place to fight, and it also kind of established the vantage point of fighting games, which is a side view and two guys standing face to face and you go at it and the idea of moves and stuff like that uh, was also developed even further with er kung fu like a young kung fu student studying the ways of his enemy capcom pays close attention to their competitor's success and capcom ended up taking a good look at karate champ and taking an uh, even better look at er kung fu and decided that they should combine the two to beat Data East and Konami at their own game, Capcom jumps into the fray with the release of Street Fighter in 1987. The biggest fighting game that really started the genre in a big way was Street Fighter. Well, Street Fighter had these amazing graphics. At the time, this is 1987, mind you, but Street Fighter had a, a group of characters. You just couldn't use any of them except for Ken and Rue. And you're on this quest now. I mean, you're, you're trying to fight all these you know, fighters from all over the world. So now, with that embedded in your head for a second, fighting all these players all the world, you have like a goal in mind. 
I was walking around the arcade, and a bunch of people were just hanging out by the by this you know one game. I was like, Street Fighter, what's Street Fighter? And then these cool characters, you know, dragon punches. Right when I saw Reddit, uh, Fireball, like, whoa, it's cool. Street Fighter has gamers virtually pummeling each other in arcades across America. But what Capcom does next will hit the arcade scene with the force of a sonic boom. I mean Street Fighter proves to Capcom that gamers will pay good money to lay the smack down on their friends. And in 1991, they kick it up a notch with Street Fighter II The World Warrior. Street Fighter II was the fighting game that, that really sort of took the world by storm. This was really sort of the peak of arcades, sort of in the, the early 90s, and, and everyone was going to arcades basically for two things racing games and fighting games. And Street Fighter was the ultimate fighting game. Street Fighter was the biggest catalyst for arcades, you know, the biggest source of rebirth. Street Fighter really showed who really was a hardcore player because you could really get your ass handed to you because unless you knew what you were doing, decisively. It was so addictive because the moves were so detailed and it was so competitive. You could just throw quarters in that machine all night long and still have fun. Whether it's fighting against a computer or fighting against a friend, it was pure competition at the arcade. Just earn, you know, tens of millions of dollars or capital all over the place and breeds people to come back to the arcade because they want to get better at the game. Well, there's really no glory in saying that you're like awesome at Pac-Man. Yeah, I rule attack. Pac-Man. Yeah, right, big deal. Who cares? With Street Fighter, it's kind of like a level of respect. You walk in the arcade and see these guys play for hours, and there will be all these court tokens lined up on the machine. The games that were addictive that you know kept you wanting to come back again you do. and again you do. and again. You win. Soon, everyone is kung fu fighting. After Street Fighter II came out, there were nearly 600 new fighting games. Street Fighter II came in the early 90s and defined the 2D fighting genre. And you saw a lot of uh, other publishers and developers sort of popping on board. SNK became you know, sort of the most successful company to follow in their footsteps. Fatal Fury was a great game. It was the first kind of one-on-one -on -one fighting game that we had for the Neo Geo. The next game after Fatal Fury was World Heroes. Later on, Samurai Showdown came out, and that was really the game that just took over everything. It was, it was, it put SNK on the map. They kind of gave something different than what Street Fighter was giving. You know, Street Fighter was more like, you know, like a true 2D fighting game. Samurai Showdown, if I can't find it, that's 2D as well. But Samurai Showdown was more because you had weapons. It had special moves. Instead of like a regular fireball, or Giles, you know, somersault kick, they had like really cool special moves, like a real special attack that did massive amounts of damage. They made an impact on the whole Street Fighter crowd. And as the competition grows increasingly fierce, designers begin coming up with more wild twists on the fighting genre. <laughs> Games like Primal Rage pit dinosaurs against one another, while Capcom's Darkstalkers features classic horror movie monsters. But the one game that gains more attention than any other is... The game that really changed and it kind of took away from Street Fighter was Mortal Kombat. Because the Mortal Kombat you have, it's not cartoon characters. You have the actual, you have a person being digitized on the, on the screen, and there was blood. Yeah, and gore. You never forget the first time, which is finish him. Finish him. You never forget that. And it stuck with people. Ed Boon and John Tobias came up with this Mortal Kombat uh, franchise, which I think they would admit is basically, you know, a, a rip-off of the Street Fighter phenomenon. But what they did was they really took things to the next level, and they, you know, added blood and gore. <laughs> but it had that, like, holy crap factor, the pulling the guy's head out and the spine is hanging or kicking off someone's head. Yes, it's over the top. Yes, it's totally exaggerated. I think part of it, it caused a lot of stir in, like, in the news and stuff. Mortal Kombat games showing people taking out hearts and stuff. It's just great. It's just fun. You know, it's entertainment. The fighting fans, you know, really want something different. And Mortal Kombat, you know, gave players that. So nobody realized that somebody was going to make that big a step forward in terms of just, you know, shocking violence in an arcade game. But it was uh, a landmark in graphic death. But the violence that makes Mortal Kombat so popular also makes it one of the most controversial games of the 90s. The fact that there was blood in the game was sort of the big controversy.
there was concern about these games and members of Congress talking about uh, video games being the sort of uh, decline and fall of Western civilization and destroying our youth and uh, leading them down the path of the no good. I hope you walk away with one thought today that if you don't do something about it, we will. And the industry felt that uh, we needed to respond in some way, in a proactive way. They, they wanted to get some sort of a rating system, but that was like kind of the cause of that whole thing, was the fact that it didn't have a rating system in place. The controversy over games like Mortal Kombat leads to the formation of the IDSA in 1994. Soon after, the ESRB rating system is introduced. Despite the controversy, fighting games hit their peak that same year. Street Fighter the movie is released, followed by the Mortal Kombat movie one year later. But how much longer will these two fighting giants stay on top? New innovations will bring new challengers, and soon, just two dimensions won't be enough. By 1993, 2D fighters are everywhere. While the makers of Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat churn out sequel after sequel, Sega's Yu Suzuki works on a new kind of fighter. The president of Sega realized that Capcom had a fighting game called Street Fighter 2 that was very popular. He asked me to come up with a game that could be competitive in this field. And I said, I don't know if I'll be successful, but of course I'll give it a try. I decided that I'd like to combine the 3D that I was always interested in with the fighting game. Bring out. Yeah. Oh, wow. The early pioneers in 3D fighting games, you have to speak about Yu Suzuki and the Virtual Fighter series. Just when that came out in the arcades, it was astounding. People had been used to fighting in two dimensions, moving back and forth and maybe jumping over one another, but not actually moving in three dimensions. And seeing fighters who had depth, um, it really was a revolution. The Virtual Fighter really opened up a, a can of worms because they opened up a whole new realm of possibilities for, for the player. It was a coup for Sega, because it, it was just brilliant. What was great also was each character had a real technique. I mean, they, it was Taekwondo, it was Kung Fu, it was, you know, Thai kickboxing, whatever it was, it was wrestling, it was like a real thing, you know, drunken style, and it was just very, very, very cool. Yeah! And just like with the 2D craze, other companies come out with their own clones. Virtual Fighter really birthed this whole 3D fighting revolution, which was then followed on by, you know, games like Tekken. All those games really took this 3D fighting methodology to a whole new level. Tekken kind of concentrated on the story of Heihachi and Jin, like uh, the Mishimas, and a lot, of, a lot of stuff going on with, with those characters. And it seemed like every single Tekken, you wanted to know what was going on with the storyline. Tekken, it still it has that whole techniques, you know, the, the kind of stuff, but it's much faster than you know, Virtual Fighter. And I think people were like, just about the Street Fighter games. There's like, um, you know, is there a 3D fighter out there that, that's kind of more for, for our fighting style? And I think Tekken was that game. And other companies like Tecmo, they just took the ball and absolutely ran with it. And you can see that in Dead or Alive. I like Virtua Fighter, but if I use different ideas to describe it, I would say it's an old traditional sushi restaurant. And on the contrary, DOA is like a sushi bar with roller skating girls serving wasabi on the sushi. It's fun. As competition between fighting games grows increasingly fierce, developers jump through hoops to draw in gamers. But then you'll get the people that are really hardcore about fighting games. They're kind of bored with Street Fighter, bored of Mortal Kombat, they want something different. So Capcom they introduced Super Street Fighter to the new challengers, and that was released in 1993, and that introduced four more new characters, Cammy, DJ, uh, Fei Long. They also added a, a combo meter for the first time. I mean, players had always you know, said, oh, okay, well, I'm, I'm doing this three or four hit combo, but now you actually would see it on the screen at the time. And then you have, which I think blew everyone away because it had weapon-based combat. You had Samurai Sword, you had uh, Nunchaku, you had bow staffs, you had spears. And it was beautiful, because they had all these sweeping effects and whooshes and you know, sparks and weapons playing together. And then you have Dead or Alive. I, I could be fighting someone, you know, they can attack me, I can counter it, but then they can counter my counter, that can counter their counter. So that engine is just genius. But as the games grow more complex, they begin to have a negative impact on the industry they helped save years earlier. The more complex the game gets, like Virtual Fighter was, you're definitely gonna lose players. 
By moving anything to 3D, there's obviously the risk of, of making a game too complicated or you know adding too many buttons. And I think there there have been some fighting games that just you know are, are just not fun because there's so much to do or the learning curve is so high. These were games that took a lot of coordination and it excluded two major classes of people: the casual gamer, the businessman that wanted to play on his lunch hour, and women. The problem with fighting games was that. Like it was, there was a period of maybe like a year where anyone could get into fighting games, and after that, it was hard for like somebody new to walk in the arcade and not just get their ass kicked and just get laughed off the laughed out of the place. So it kind of kept new people from getting into it after a while. As the arcade market declines again, fighting games will have to find a new place to call home. Towards the late 1990s, the arcade market is down for the count. But at home, it's a different story. At one point, players were still playing fighting games in the arcade, and you know they would play at home on lesser versions of the same game, like Super Nintendo. People would play Street Fighter 2, but they'd still go to the arcade because it looked better, it played better. But then with a game like Tekken, and the arcades was built on a version of PlayStation hardware. So what you have is a, you know, a game that is very easy to be transitioned to the home console. So what happened was that these guys who were spending quarters night after night in these arcades, spending sometimes hundreds of dollars a month, were able to buy a console like the PlayStation and play it basically for free at home once you bought the game for you know, 40 or 50 bucks. By the mid to late 90s, players could get something that was you know, almost as good as or better than the arcades on their home consoles for less money. So why do you go to the arcades to play your games when you don't have to? So what happened was that people started gravitating towards playing a lot of these fighting games in the home. And, you know, the home consoles were so powerful then that it was basically, you know, arcades kind of lost their luster. Not only are home console fighters matching their arcade counterparts, some are even surpassing them. When the Dreamcast launched in uh, September of 1999, one of its uh, launch titles was Soul Calibur, a game from Namco. And that was one of the best fighting games, and it sold extraordinarily well right out of the gate. At the launch of the Xbox, Microsoft was really lucky to have Mr. Itagaki and Team Ninja sign on to do a Dead or Alive 3 game for the Xbox. Every console needs a great fighting game to launch. That's one of the core genres of consoles, and Xbox got that great fighting game, Dead or Alive 3, and it really helped the platform. Dead or Alive 3 did very well on Xbox. They showed the world exactly what the Xbox could do. He expanded on the notion of multi-tiered stages. Not only could you knock somebody off a platform, say, but you could knock them off a huge platform, and they would go through a floor and bounce down. But the old 2D fighters that started it all aren't gone for good. Old rivals team up, and new franchises such as the Guilty Gear series ensure that gamers with the 2D itch have a place to go. 3D uh, fighting games have been a focal selling point now in the fighting game genre. I mean, a lot of uh, players don't want to hear about that. I mean, they still love 2D games. I mean, even me personally, I prefer 2D fighters. I think the best 2D fighter out right now is Guilty Gear X2 Reload. Capcom had suffered some reversals. Street Fighter 3, for instance, was not a big success in North America. SNK's later King of Fighters games, 99 and beyond, got kind of a mixed fan reaction. So they got together and decided to, you know, let's settle our differences and give fans what they want. So they created a lot of different uh, crossovers, Capcom vs. SNK and Capcom vs. SNK 2, which were straight 2D fighters. Today, fighting game tournaments such as the Super Battle Opera Championships and the EVO 2K competitions feature both 2D and 3D fighting games. Thousands of players from all around the globe duke it out for cash prizes and pride. Meanwhile, fighting games continue to evolve. Now game machines are powerful enough. A big trend with fighting games is that now, you know, it's not just a static environment, you can actually use the environment against your opponent. Even a game like Def Jam, Fight for New York, you can throw your opponent in front of the subway train and have the subway train run them over. And more kind of, I think, is like the success story. They die in the arcades, and then all of a sudden they come up with Deadly Alliance, which hits me. They went, kind of went back to the roots. A lot of blood, gore, fatalities, but they just overhauled the engine. They moved to a 3D space. It was just phenomenal. Online is going to become a really important part of fighting games. 
And I think the idea of facing off against your friend in a fighting game is really, really exciting. And that sort of brings back what it feels like in arcade to be against each other and punching each other. It's like, hey, I got you there, and having fun that way. Fighting games have gone from ruling the arcades to dominating home consoles. They've pushed gaming to its limits, both technologically and morally. There's no denying that fighting games helped shape the world of gaming into what it is today. Every time I see a new game, a new Mortal Kombat, a new Dead or Alive, Ultimate, I'm just blown away like how much we've evolved. Games are going to evolve and going to be much better. In the end, the real winners are us, the gamers, who get to play these awesome fighting games. You win! have to use the codes. B -B -A -B -B -A -B I've seen the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles naked. L1, L1. Zelda, naked. Left, left, left. Mario, no pants. A, B, A, B. R1, R1, R1. Lakers, naked. Master Chief, Pittsburgh Steelers. Manchester United, but naked. R1, 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 R1. Get the latest cheat codes and walk through strategies for Odd World, Stranger's Wrath. I need this. Cheat. Tuesday night at 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific.